Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome back to Bits and Bobs Divination here with me today as we are going to be diving in to see what magic lies within the pages of this grimoire. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we even get started though, feel free to get yourself settled and comfy and cozy as my intention for this flip through is to inspire you and to get those creative juices flowing versus becoming one of those spaces of annoying pesky thoughts of comparison that start to kind of creep in and steal away our creative power. So really get yourself cozy and remind yourself that this is a really safe space for your creative mindset to kind of set in. As this deep dive and magical book tour is for anyone who found this video and wishes to bring form to your distinct and rare unique magic, to allow your personal and spiritual perspective to have a place to roam freely, to see how divination and creativity can mix to create a divine alchemy, and so you can seek others in the comments down below and within this beautiful kindred community or within the pages here today to ask questions, to mix up new ideas, and to inspire your own pages to be brought to life. I do hope that this space adds to the growing pool of amazing artists, makers, witches, diviners, and magical sorcery that's already on this beautiful platform, as so many have inspired me to share just a glimpse today of my personal journey here with you. So I'll be sure to put some of my favorites and any that come up within the uh, flip through here today down below in the description so you can enjoy their contributions to this community as well and to have multiple places and multiple perspectives to play and bounce your creative ideas off of. And for those of you who typically tune into my channel, I'm sure you're used to my pick a card readings and I do plan to continue doing those pick a card readings, but I would also love to make more of videos on my art and magic and how divination can also kind of bridge into that in the future. So if that's something that you're interested in or you have different ideas of videos you'd like to see, such as my favorite art magic techniques how to bring in divination into your art magic or even looking into the different ways to include hidden messages, pockets, or pop-ups into your own grimoire, then do let me know down below. I would love to hear as that might actually influence a future video that I do on this channel. Also, if you are new to this channel, do feel free to check out the different offerings I have down below. I do personal private snail mail readings, and I also do create handmade eco-friendly spell and ritual papers, which you'll see in this grimoire here today, and are some of my favorite offerings to create. Uh, you're also welcome to subscribe if you haven't already, as I, like I said, do pick a card readings, I want to do more on art magic, and I also have educational videos on charm casting, if that's something you're interested in. And lastly, if you want to look even further, I do a lot more of the behind the scenes of how I create these pages and different art magic that I get up to even outside of this grimoire on my Instagram. So do feel free to check that out as well. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and just start diving in to this art grimoire and see the magic that lies within. So to start off, I want to point out the obvious that this is definitely not a very antique looking or super medieval manuscript kind of vibe when it comes to my grimoire. I actually ended up choosing to use a good, I mean it's not like kind of rough quality, but I did want to use something that had really good paper quality as a mixed media artist, and I thought it was really important for me to also choose something that was still quite simple on the outside so I didn't feel overwhelmed and um, feeling that perfectionism sort of creep in. So this was the perfect grimoire for me and this is actually made by Archer and Olive. Um, I will have them linked down below, not sponsored at all, although I did win this in a giveaway over a year ago um, and so this is why it, it was just perfectly came into my hands at the right time and I just had to start creating in it. It just, this book started speaking to me and it was just perfect. 
so I don't worry if it gets little ink splotches or it gets dirty or anything like that. And as you can see, it is quite a monster here. It's a chunky one. I can't even push it in any further. Um, so it's quite a chunky one. If you guys are interested in these kinds of sketchbooks, then do feel free to check those out. But you can use virtually anything for your own grimoire. This just was perfect for me. But let's go ahead and look on the inside. So as we open this up, I actually start out with a page with a few different stickers and things that kind of inspire me to create. So whenever I open this, it kind of just gets me inspired looking at some other artists and getting inspired by their work. As you can see, there are different stickers. This is actually the account that I won the give giveaway from, which is Sammy Journals. I don't know if she is still around, but if she is, I will uh, link her down below. I have a little bit of Mari in the Sky, stuff from the Threadbound Oracle. So those of you who see that um, Oracle deck a lot in my readings, that came from there. Several different other ones. And the back side of this also has some included, as well as lots of little papers in here to keep the inspiration flowing but let's start off with the first page right so that's what we all want to look at so here we go this is the first page and what kind of kicked off everything for me personally as I was feeling very much in the perfectionism mindset when I began this where I was like should I have an index should I start with you know the moons and the phases and all of that and as a person who wouldn't say they are an advanced you know practitioner or um, person in any kind of magical sorcery I would say that I've definitely passed like the beginner stuff um, uh, or the things that are just sort of very formidable foundational knowledge and so I don't have a lot of that in here a lot more of this is actually personal gnosis um, and kind of allowing my creativity to go where it needs to go so um, I actually started first with this page this was the first page that kicked it off a year ago this is a year's worth of pages and I started with my intuitive creative well and this page is something I like to come back to with big themes that are really inspiring me it's like a little tiny well that I can place them in um, to come back to when I need to the idea that um, kind of sprung this forward uh, came from art is magic online and their free workshop so I'll also have that link down below but you can take these different little pieces out um, and use them to look at different things I also have them where they can be undone here so I can put different ones in here as I go right now I have trust to nourish um, and adaptability adaptability definitely being one that I've been working with and you'll see is quite a theme throughout this entire uh, journal um, and grimoire as for this page um, I kind of wanted to do um, a Molly Roberts inspired art manifesto so here I decided to do my own personal manifesto that just kind of came to me one day uh, and I just wrote it down and taped it in and it just felt perfect I actually didn't end up putting this in until about halfway through the book and it just totally fits the feelings and the inspiration and the way in which I like to work with my own memoir um, and so it says here art is truly magical it unites my ideas it heals my soul it is a tool to grow my creative genius is unique and deeply sacred it makes my lines bolder my words louder my creative well deeper art is my soul's playground and I will play and I just thought that was perfect for me because I didn't want this to be a place of perfectionism. And so this is a great place to come back to. And I would really um, point out if you are feeling that perfectionism, then definitely feel free to put something like this in here to kind of just remind you that this is whatever space you want to create it to be. So with that said, without talking too much on, on each of the pages, I'm going to try not to talk too long on each of them. Let's continue. So... This is a page that I did around the very beginning of, or the very end of summer, around August time, a year ago, talking about the harvest and things that I'm grateful for. And this is actually a style of art um, sort of collage that I'd been doing for a really long time um, through college and through different uh, high school even. And I really enjoyed doing collage, but I found as I moved through this journal that illustration and really 
working um, my creative illustrative muscles was really important for me so I kind of leaned away from pages like this as we move forward but I think that they think collage is a beautiful way to um, use what you have then as you can see I start moving into illustration and this was um, and still is a theme that I'm working on for my own personal healing so this was a art magic page to sort of bring that forward whenever I need to I like to refer to a lot of my pages as like um, sort of oracle-esque uh, pages and also they bring forth the energy that I put in there almost like a little battery that I can charge myself from so whenever I need to connect with this energy I can just flip this open and use it as like a little meditation battery uh, but here it is with surrender trust the fall and the idea of kind of trying to trust my instincts and also trust my intuition and trying to figure out what is anxiety and what isn't so um, I have that there and then I also have um, a little bit of not magic on the side here is a page on Maybon. So those of you who are here for more of the divination side, I like to play around with divination here um, and putting my spreads that I do for each of the Sabbaths. So this one was for Maybon. And you'll see as I move through the pages that every time I do one of these really big uh, readings for myself around the wheel of the year, I like to use the actual cards that I pulled and the, the spread and put it inside here. And the way that I do that are little rubbings based off of these uh, charm cast tarot charms um, so if you guys aren't familiar with these you'll find them a lot in my two week ahead readings uh, so you can check those out if you want to see more but I decided to stick those in with the, the rubbings on those and then you'll also find a way um, in which I kind of hide a bit of what um, each of my readings means. I actually write it more as a story or I talk about the things that I saw in it more as a poem and I find that that's a great way to be able to kind of hide messages or have ways that it, it's personal to me but someone else reading this wouldn't necessarily know like all the ins and outs. And you'll notice that this page is actually blank and what I actually have on top of here is a piece of my Maybon spell and ritual paper like I said I make handmade spell and ritual papers if you're interested in those uh, you know just gonna shout that out uh, but I wanted to do a whole spread and little page on this but I found that the thing that I made here um, I ended up just taking out and putting on my altar space instead and it's a little bit too thick to put in here um, but I made this little altar space um, that I put in there as well and I find that this is a really fun way of working with some art magic and working with the spell um, papers as well to kind of enhance your magic so there we are with that like I said it would have gone here but here we are well, let's keep moving on so here we are on a page on cicadas um, I won't talk too much on each of the pages here, but I did really enjoy working with a border here, and so I made my own little template to create borders within my pages, and you'll see I really like to work with these gold watercolors as well. So I have a whole page on cicadas, I also like to add different um, elements or si uh, sigils or signs and symbols that really resonate for me personally with the different um, animals and and energies that you'll see as we move through here. So that's cicadas. Next up is a little uh, fireside water coloring that I did while camping. And then over here I did stuff on cottonwoods and how you can work with the cottonwood energy and what it really means to me again. Um, working with that gold. I will say if you guys put leaves in yours, they definitely like to unstick. So um, I found tacky glue uh, and sort of a glue stick will work really well in there. Here I have a page on smart weed that grows where I live. And then I also have this um, page inspired by Molly, Ro one of Molly Roberts pages uh, where she did a little like oracle within the pages. And I'd love to do a whole um, sort of tutorial on this and do another one in the future. So if that's something you're interested in, do let me know. Feel free to choose a number now and uh, you can see what your message is if you so wish. Um, but this is the Lady Luck Oracle, which was inspired by my uh, Maybon reading in that I got the Ladybug as one of my Oracle cards. 
so I did a whole thing on Lady Luck and illustrated it as well. As you can see, I start playing with more illustration. And then here is one of my favorite pages. It also smells the best. Every time I open up this page, it just smells like fall because the paper that I used here is, again, some of the spell and ritual paper that I make. This is for Sawin, and I infused a lot of different waters and watercolors and specific tools and the paper to really create a supercharged page for um, ancestor communication and meditations. So I can just place my hands on here and take a moment to connect with my ancestors, to connect with my loved ones beyond the veil, and to use it as a meditation portal or astral portal as well. So these are really fun um, and um, it works really well with the paper. And again, it smells amazing. Uh, the next page is a bit more on those in my life that have passed and are beyond the veil now. Um, I have some of their information closed up so people don't see them all the time. But I will show you this one on my little Annie girl here, um, talking about um, a little bit about her and stuff like that. So this is another way of adding fun little pockets and things like that into your grimoire, as well as using tracing paper and collage. Uh, so the next one we have on Samhain. Again, you'll find a theme with these where I kind of play around with the rubbings here of those uh, charm tiles or charm tarot tiles uh, to play around with the different spreads and then I did do another sort of reflection here and because crows were part of the oracle that I oracle card that I pulled I had to do an entire page on crows <laughs> and illustrate a crow as well which was super fun and really got my creative um, muscles you know, really working. So here we are with crows, again, doing different signs and symbols and um, things about them. And also crows get such a bad rep in the magical community. Um, and after looking deeper and deeper into crows, I actually found that there was there was such a high population of crows in certain areas that a lot of the reason why they are known as being, um, you know, har harbingers of death and things like that are just a big plan to get rid of their population. So definitely look into that the lore and stuff like that behind crows because it's really interesting and they are super intelligent. So feel free to look into that on your own if you want. Aha! My imagination invitation page. This one really helped me in getting myself to get in here. You know what I mean? Getting myself to get my hands into this book. And as you can see, I also start bringing in some color, right? For the longest time, you can tell there was a bit of like an earthiness because it is fall, um, of course when I was doing these pages and saw wind times, but all of a sudden we kickstart some color in here, which is a lot of fun. And basically imagination invitation is a way to kind of lure my inner creative to my um, artistic place um, or to my space so that I uh, actually get into this book. So this is one of my favorite little rituals that I do. Then I have a, play, a page on both snow water and rainwater, using snow water on this page and using rainwater on this page to, to create their washes and to infuse that energy. And I also dive a little bit deeper into thunderstorms, hail, blizzard water, ice water, and things like that, um, and play around with a bit of lightning and some fun golds again, as well as silvers. A whole page on labyrinths. This is actually a working labyrinth as well, so I can actually use it. Um, I do find that it's quite difficult with um, my finger. It's a little bit bigger than a finger labyrinth, so instead I tend to take a, um, a brush and sort of brush along each of the different paths. I also found this really cool um, video series talking about labyrinths. Again, I will link them down below um, and different walk ideas and ways in which to use a labyrinth. And this makes me very excited to go see a physical labyrinth and walk one. So that's a, a fun little page. This one really got my illustrative um, sort of 
inspirations onto the page where I uh, illustrated not only the liquid luck but also the liquid luck potion that I created um, and talking about what the spirit of luck really means to me and I actually found that um, I wanted to write about how to create that and I also um, ran out of room so I ended up creating this little extra bit here um, and a little pocket. So that is my page on Liquid Luck. It's one of my favorite pages as it um, shines and it's just, it was so much fun to illustrate this one. Then here, you might have seen this already on the channel. This was during an artistic creative scrying session that we actually did together on one of my pick a card readings where it was an art magic oracle um, reading. So if you're interested in kind of bridging the gap between art magic and divination, do be sure to check out this video up here as it'll talk all about that. Um, I do believe it was one of the middle cards but um, feel free to choose any of them and see what art magic comes forward for you with those oracle messages and the fun interactive um, activities that we get up to so that's this one then um, because Corrigan uh, I don't remember if it's Corrigan the art witch or Corrigan I don't remember her channel name but Corrigan um, is another one that I love to watch um, and she has done a, a whole video talking about her different grimoires and one of them is a little mini grimoire on the moons and the different names of the moons that she has come up with as a southern hemisphere witch. I'm a northern hemisphere witch but I do uh, want to create my own set of moon names you know that that makes sense to me versus just the flower moon, the worm moon, the beaver moon, whatever it might be and ones that make more sense to my local area so I wanted to keep track of the moons as well over here. And then this page is all about um, wanting to bring some some fire, some heat, some sun energy into my life as we were hitting winter, the depths of winter. And around February, I always get the winter blues. So this is a way of, of kind of invoking a little bit or evoking a bit more of that sun energy back into my life. So I created this whole page um, on sun energy. And sometimes pages don't need any words. The illustrations are the art, are the magic in and of themselves. Uh, in and of themselves so this is kind of like a little charged battery for me to come back to when I need that vitamin D in my life then here we are at the card of the year and my year ahead spread if you guys are interested in getting your own reading I do year ahead spreads around the beginning of each new year but you could get one for you know your new year in a birthday um, a new birthday year or a new um, year of life or however you wish but um, I wanted to do one for the uh, new year and the card that I got was the unseen which is from Mari in the Skies deck of the gentle tarot and I plan to do some reflections here at the end of the year again playing with those rubbings and then I did a whole vision journaling page here for a vision board uh, and I've never done a collage vision board this intricately and this like uh, I just I feel like I've always surface leveled them or done what other people thought I needed to put in a in a board or what I thought or I expected of myself in some weird way and this one felt so authentic and felt so freeing to do and so much of what I've put on this vision board has already come true and has manifested itself um within the year. So this is one of my favorite pages to come back to with my word of the year being curiosity. So that's the vision board. I'd love to talk at length about creating a vision board and maybe I will when I create my new one come the new year. Okay, so this is one of my least favorite pages in that um, I just don't really love the colors. I don't really love how, how messy it got um, and this is a great you know example that I could paste over this or change it over time but I also kind of am fond of this page because it reminds me that again perfectionism is overrated and so the most important part is the process so I love this quote from or at least where I found it from uh, Dash and Lily on Netflix it's uh, just a show I really love and um, one of the characters says, argue for your limitations and they are surely yours. And it just is one that I think is so important and so impactful um, for me. And so I ended up creating another sort of word here and I'll go ahead and flip these all up for you so you can see them. And it says here, argue um, 
for possibility and you open doors. And so then there's a little key at the end. Usually they flip up and stay a lot better, but again, not my favorite page. It doesn't work as well as I hoped it was in my mind, but I still think it's a page that I think is really important because I went beyond my limitations or what I thought were, were what things need to be. So um, one of my favorites as well in a weird fond way. Then I have a whole page on glaciers. Glaciers are very hard to illustrate, so this is probably not my favorite illustration, but I put it in here anyway, and then wrote about glaciers in my area and how it's affected the landscape, um, and then ultimately affects the different plant growth and then the magic that I can create in the area that I live in. And then also, again, it was winter, and uh, glaciers were just something I found really interesting. Ooh, yes. Okay, so now we're at our pop-up page. <laughs> so this is a little pop-up that I made, and I love the sound it makes. Um, <laughs> on Orion and Scorpius in the sky. A lot of us are very familiar with Orion, uh, but Scorpius is actually uh, one that I find all, all the time in the night sky during May and October. So as a person who loves to look at the night sky and where I live, I live in an area where I can actually see the Milky Way sometimes. Um, constellations are, are really cool and really interesting and the lore behind them is really fun. So I ended up doing a little pop up here and it says, when the scorpion comes, Orion flees to the utmost end of the earth, which is so true um, if you look into it. So from there, I start to get into a bit of a weird um, slump because we're still in the height of winter here. So I put down from the Unexpected Gypsy another channel that I'll have listed down below um, where she talks about this quote where when life feels like a stormy sea I am assuring myself because I know it to be true that calmer times are on the way but in the meantime may our boats be strong, our crew skilled, and our cabins warm and cozy when we need to rest. Shine when you can, cocoon when you need. And so I felt that was so important and impactful for me at that time. So as you can see, poetry and written word are a huge part in my practice um, and part of my art. So I had to put that in here as well. And then over here, I kept getting the card volcano. I'll actually pull it out. And this card is from the Song of the Grandmother's Deck. As you can see, I kind of got inspiration there to create the volcano that I did here with inks and all sorts of different supplies. Uh, but this was just a card that kept coming up and kept coming up and kept coming up and um, it was because I wasn't making changes. I was procrastinating or putting different changes behind or kind of hiding or avoiding change and as a person who has the life number of four and a lot of fours in different parts of my chart and things like that, uh, the four energy is in is very imprinted in my earthly energy of keep things how they always were, don't ever change. And so this is a really big art magic page for me and evokes that nothing changes if nothing changes energy because nothing changes if nothing changes. And so this was a really big lesson for me. Uh, then moving on, we move into coyotes, or coyotes for some. Um, and I talked all about coyotes and um, I ended up naming the February moon for me the coyote moon and talking about how they kind of show up in my life and how they were showing up in different meditations and um, uh, different messages for me and how that impacts my, my um, magic. I even created a little coyote sigil to come back to whenever I need that, the bravery and the um, adaptability that coyotes kind of bring forth. Uh, they are, are a really hard lesson, but a really good one too. Uh, then we move into Ostara, where I talk again about Ostara doing um, haikus this time. I'm starting to move into fun little haikus for these, talking about the different cards that I got here, and then playing around with some Ostara tree offerings and how I use those, which are really fun to make. They're like different little offerings with some earthly mud magic, and I love making these for different trees in my yard. 
Then we move to Beltane, so you can see there's there's not much between between the uh, two different Sabbaths here, but we do move to Beltane, doing again the same sort of setup here. Uh, and then I also did a whole page on love spell affirmations, which was inspired by a I put a spell on you sort of ASMR video that I really loved, so you can check that out down below as well. Um, but it really kind of inspired creating this little ritual, which I love to do when I need a little self-love affirmations. Then we move into violets. Violets are one of my favorite flowers. They grow so abundantly um, where I live and I absolutely love not only their beauty but also that they have a lot of queer magic to them and as a queer person myself that was really important for me and I want to do even more pages on queer magic as I move through this uh, but this was just one of those first sort of sapphic flowers that I played around with. I also have a couple of little um, uh, magic things for a little violet dream sachet or sachet I don't know ever how you say it um, and then talking more about the plant so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back in here and we'll look at the next page which is on litha so here we are talking about the summer solstice again similar setup but a lot of color much more punchy here and playing around with some of my handmade stamps to create these little oak leaves which totally makes sense with the uh, the Battle of the Oak and um, uh, Holly King around that time. So here we are with Litha, and I even let this sit out in the sun um, and really soak in that sun magic. And then here we are with phoenixes and different little magical ideas and rituals that I want to do more with the phoenix energy. As you can see, I work a lot with different energies and kind of bringing them into my magic using the symbols, using the lore. I love that kind of stuff. So I explore those in these, these pages a lot. Um, illustrating a little bit differently, a little bit out of the typical illustrative style that I go for, but I had a lot of fun kind of bringing in the bright um, different color here. Hopefully you can see all of the uh, range here. Um, but this whole page, like I said, is on phoenixes, which is a really big, prominent part of a lot of the things that I was seeing. Um, I actually ended up seeing like 11 phoenixes randomly um, throughout the day um, a few months ago. And so I just had to look into phoenixes. Uh, and then I have protective house glamour, a protective house glamour that I ended up doing. And because I don't want everyone knowing the ins and outs of some of my protective magic, I have it sort of shrouded in this little envelope here, um, a little glassine envelope, so that um, I can access it, but it's not out in the open for everyone. So this was a protective house glamour that I did. Again, playing around with my little stamps that I hand carve. And then we move into cloudomancy or nephlomancy or cloud scrying, however you wish to say it, um, illustrating some little clouds that I'd seen in the past and how you can kind of start and play around with cloudomancy. Uh, and then I also did a whole page doing some more, talking about um, the speed of clouds, the direction of the wind, the colors, texture, types of clouds, symbols, um, and the departure movement of the cloud and how that can all affect the reading that you can get there. Um, and uh, I just played around with um, these little note cards, which I just ended up painting blue with some, um, what's it called, a salt, <laughs> and uh, creating really fun textures on these, so they feel really cool. And then I believe we are at our last page up to this point, which is almost halfway through this whole book, on Lamas and Lunasa, uh, talking about, again, what I pulled there. But what I do plan to do in the future, as I already have little pages ready to go here, talking about Lou, so I want to do a whole page on Lou and his lore, which I was only going to do this much, but the more that I read about him, it might be a two-page spread. And then I also want to do something on some banana muffins that I like to do for abundance um, and prosperity, so 
that's also something I want to put in here. I don't do a ton of kitchen witchery, but that's definitely one I love to do. So as you can see, there's still a lot left to play around with in here. Um, it's going to end up being one of those books that just like hang open this big. Uh, but if you had a favorite page or a certain page that really just struck your fancy or a certain technique that you'd like to see in the future, um, in a future video, do let me know what that is down below. As like I said, I really do want to share some ideas and really add to this beautiful community that's given so much to me. So do let me know the things that you'd like to see. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me here today for seeing the different um, uh, supplies and techniques that I got up to within the art magic in here. And like I said, if you're interested in those papers, um, I do have Maybon papers and Sawin and even some Yule papers um, left down below that you can check out for different sets if you want to add those to your journal or art grimoire, book of shadows, however you wish. Um, but I am going to go ahead and leave you here. Thank you again so much for joining me here today. And if you haven't already, do be sure and consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday for pick a card readings, educational videos on charm casting. And like I said, I'd love to do more of these in the future. So if you stay tuned in, I'll be sure to um, put some more of those videos out for you. So until the next one, kindred spirits and magical souls and anyone else who may have joined us here today, do be sure to keep your mind open and your eyes wide to the magic all around you. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.